We have a 2007 Lexus ES350. The radiator system failed and I suspect it was caused by overpressurization because of this failed radiator cap, which is normally spring loaded over here. And the spring is right down there. If you do not allow the pressure to get relieved, the system got overpressurized and then blew this hose off right here. This hose gets connected over to here to this side port. We could just try to find this part over here and just reconnect the hose, but we're going to replace the whole radiator because the vehicle has over 200,000 miles. So I think it would be a good preventive maintenance to just replace the radiator with a whole new part. So here's the new radiator. It's a Koyo brand. If you're going to replace a radiator on a Japanese vehicle, I recommend you either get Koyo or Denso. Now there's other good radiator manufacturers out there, but if you want a perfect fit, I suggest you go Koyo or Denso. What's rather unique about this radiator is both the supply and return coolant ports are on the bottom over here. And you have a relief valve that you could unscrew so that while you're replenishing the system with coolant, the back pressure, coolant rushing in, the air will get forced out through this port. We want to get to the bottom of the radiator, so we have to remove this splash guard. We're using a big cement mixer pan to capture the fluid. If you remove the cap, it'll help accelerate the draining of the coolant. So while that's draining out, we'll work on this. It's a push pin set up. There we go. Connect all this stuff. clip right over here. Okay. Now we'll unclip this. Move this off to the side. Like that. So the condenser is bolted on to the radiator. With this bracket assembly, you got to remove these two screws here and these two screws down here. So I'm using my electric ratchet with a Phillips adapter, and you got to put a lot of pressure on the screw or you run the risk of stripping the screw heads. Now right here at the base, the condenser is mounted into these two brackets, so we can move the condenser a little bit out of the way. Okay, now we'll take this piece off the fan shroud.
So the fan shroud is bolted on the bottom. So I'm going to get to it by going underneath the car. So I'm using a quarter inch ratchet with a 10 millimeter long socket. There's a hose that's attached to the fan shroud. There's a bracket there, so I can detach that. So now we only need to detach the ATF lines here and here and the two hoses behind these two ATF lines and this one over here. Okay, so to pinch the ears of the spring clamp on the radiator hoses, I use this specialty tool. So if I Put a little dielectric grease around the rubber. That should help slide the clamp off. See how loose it is? If you squeeze it enough, it'll lock the, the ears of the hose clamp together, which is what I did right here. Now it's nice, now it's loose. Okay, it's off. So this is a hose pick tool to put in between the hose and the hose connection point, and that should break the adhesion. And you just work work around the hose. There we go. We'll be taking this foam insulation and transferring it over. So we have this two-way tape with foam, so we'll use that to take the old foam and attach it to the radiator. Now we're put, ready to put the radiator in. So you got to make sure that the mounting holes are lined up. You'll know it's in the holes when this is pretty well flush against this cross brace down here. Wiggle the radiator around and it's not moving. Now I'm going to lift up the condenser and put it in the bracket. Gonna make sure the holes are lined up. Put it on the right side. There. So I put a little bit of anti seize on the screws for the condenser mount. See if it lines up with the holes. dielectric grease and put it on the mounting points of the radiator hose.
You don't have to use it a lot, just a little bit. I gotta pull up to, to release the clamp. I'll put some dielectric grease on the outside of the hose so that the clamp slides on easier. I think I got it now. There. There. plastic piece, the remnants from the other radiator is broken in here so I'll just move this clip over here and crush it. The new radiator didn't come with a new cap, so I had to go buy one. So this is my spill-free coolant funnel that you, comes with the various adapters. I picked this one. Okay, that one's tight. The advantage of this is I can have this partially filled up with coolant, and when I start the engine, as the air bubbles come up, uh, coolant won't be spilling all over the place. Loosen this up. See, it's going in now. The air is getting purged out of the radiator. Hear it? Okay, phone's coming out of the port here, which means it's filled up. So at least the radiator is filled up. Now we'll start the car. Put some more cooling in here. The 
So the uh, air pockets in the engine is getting purged out. So it's very important to let the car get the full operating temperature before you button everything up because if you got air pockets in the engine compartment and if that thermostat hasn't completely opened up, you'll have coolant rush in filling those air pockets and then your, the coolant level in your radiator will drop. And we're done.